Hi everyone and welcome to video three. We are going to start by looking at participation criteria three and we're going to start by focusing on the questions specific to criteria three. Here we are looking at the student and asking, does the student require extensive individual direct instruction across multiple settings, utilizing intensive accommodations, modifications, and assistive technology to access and make progress on the Kentucky academic standards and to maintain and generalize learning. There is a whole lot in that question that we are going to start unpacking. If you answer yes to that criterion question, then we move on to question two in this criterion. Did the ARC review current within the past year and longitudinal over time data across settings? We're focusing on those age appropriate home, school, and community environments to inform the ARC decision. So with, like with the participation criteria one and two, we're going to look over in that far right column to see the sources of evidence and justification that we will need to be able to answer the questions. And you'll want to make sure that you've pulled that information and have the dates for each of those sources of evidence. And looking at the center column, remember, if you answer no to either of those questions, then you are stopping and not proceeding any further because the student is not going to be eligible to participate. But if you do answer yes to both, then you will continue on to criterion four. All right, so let's unpack criterion three a little further. The first thing we have to have is a solid understanding of what the terms mean. So in the guidance, there are some fantastic definitions that you'll want to make sure that you access to support parents. So the first definition I would encourage you to unpack and highlight is this extensive direct and individualized instruction, which in this case means that repeated instruction with substantial supports. They can't be temporary in nature and they need those to achieve measurable gains in the grade or age level curriculum and they need to use substantially adapted materials. They also need those intensive accommodations, modifications, and assistive technology that exceed what is allowed on general assessments for students as described in the inclusion document. Also, when we're looking at that term, acquire, maintain, generalize, demonstrate, and transfer skills across multiple settings, we're talking about when the student has acquired skills and can apply the skills across setting, such as a different classes, at home, at a job, and in the community. We're focused on not only that, but with different people and with a variety of materials. In this case, the note is also super important. I put a star here by this note that the student's needs for extensive direct individualized instruction are not transient or temporary. His or her needs for substantial supports to achieve gains in the grade and age appropriate curriculum require extensive supports uh, to be able to acquire, maintain, and generalize across settings. Um, this is another time where we need to make sure that the present levels in the IEP provide us uh, with substantiated data, you know, numbers, percents, averages of how this student is performing to allow us to answer that question. If you look at the current IEP and don't think that as an ARC, you will be able to answer that, um, then you will want to definitely make sure that you have that data collected and that you're looking at modifying or changing the IEP um, in that ARC meeting so that all that data is present in the student's present levels. When we talk about the documentation that is required, um, remember to check out those guiding questions for the ARC. And remember that um, anytime you check no on those questions, then you will need to document you know, why a no was determined, you know, what the data told you that said this student doesn't require those things, and then document why you're stopping the process. 
<clears throat> if you're documenting yes, you have all of the evidence, then remember to make sure that your um, conference summary notes clearly document not only the data itself, but how you analyze that as an ARC, and then what conclusion that you came to. Here is a snapshot um, of, whoops, sorry, uh, when you are looking further down that page, make sure that your sources of evidence documentation is correct. And um, when you check the record review document, note that it has that exact same language and that a reviewer would absolutely go through and check each section where there's a comma and an and to make sure that the documentation is present <clears throat> and note that they are looking in that IEP um, for that documentation. In addition, the record review confirms that they are going to, if reviewing this, um, this ARC meeting, they are going to be looking at those sources of evidence and that documentation. So it needs to be um, attached to, with those records in Infinite Campus so that it can be accessed and reviewed. That brings us to keyword number three. And this word is document because we want to make sure as an ARC chair that you are documenting across all the required infinite campus forms and in the notes you are typing in the conference summary that everything makes clear and coherent sense. When you are thinking about those conference summary notes it's important to consider how to document justification that the student is receiving that individual direct instruction, intensive accommodations, modifications, and the required assistive technology. You'll want to make sure that that is documented in the IEP and that you're discussing what that looks like in the classroom in the conference summary. This is also a great time to make an extra note to yourself. Remember to include parent involvement, parent comments, and parent feedback in that section. So we are now at participation criteria four, which covers exclusions. If I did not say this clearly from the very beginning, um, this participation guidelines form is not one that you should jump around from section to section. It must be filled out logically and sequentially, starting with question one, because there are exclusion criterions that tell us when you have to stop the process if you don't answer yes to every question. So this will be the, the last question that you are considering and you must consider every single area. This time, if you look over in the supports for justification column, note that there aren't a list of forms with dates that you should be adding, but there will be significant data that you will be adding in. There is a large text field for you to add. You will be considering in this participation criterion for excessive or extended absences. And um, if the student has or doesn't have ex excessive or extended absences, you're going to review the data for that. So what you have an infinite campus for the student's attendance and then document uh, where you found that evidence and then document in the conference summary the results of your search. You know, the student had X number of absences. These were determined not to be or to be excessive or extended. The next section is disability related to visual or auditory disabilities, emotional or behavioral disabilities, specific learning disabilities, speech and language impairment. If any of those, you document which one it is and um, what you had determined about that, um, if that was an exclusionary factor or not um, for this student. Um, if the student has a native language, social, cultural, or economic difference, you would document where you learned that what um, tool that showed you that data, and then um, what your conversation was about the data you have, and if that's affecting eligibility. Um, if you identify the student was an English learner or predetermined poor performance on a grade level assessment, if the student displays disruptive behaviors or experiences emotional duress during testing, uh, an administrator decision or education environment or instruction. You want to very carefully go through each question and consider 
all the exclusions and document that you did not base the decision to participate on any of those descriptions alone. Uh, make sure that you are checking yes or no based on the decisions that you make. And keep in mind that question two, the ARC's decision for the student to participate in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment is not primarily the result of any of the exclusions above. So the decision can't be made solely because, for example, the student is an English language learner or because the student has excessive or extended absences, um, but it might be part of the factors of that student, you know, based on a medical condition that they have, or you know, they might be a student uh, that has significant behaviors uh, related to their um, inability to communicate wants and needs. So um, just because you check yes on one of those factors does not mean the student is not eligible, but it is telling us that we can't make a student eligible solely because of those factors. All right, so let's head to the guidance and look at the note um, on page 23. While the alternate assessment decision cannot be made solely on those factors, we must carefully consider them. And if the student is found to have any of those exclusionary factors, that we list it, we document the conversation we have, and um, that we explain um, our logic. The ARC does not have the power to override um, any of the criterion within the participation guidelines form. So you want to make sure that your logic is very clear. Um, the um, review document has very uh, clear bullets outlining each of the key points. And uh, if a reviewer is looking over your records, um, they are going to look at each element individually and make sure that the ARC considered them. So you'll want to make sure your notes are crystal clear when each area is considered, the conversation that you had, and the decisions that were made. So moving forward, you definitely want to make sure that all questions are answered because the note says that is something that will be considered and is part of that yes, no review process. So at this point, I invite you to just pause the video for a minute and review participation criterion and make sure you're clear on one through four, how you would document what uh, documents you need to review, the language that you would need to use in the conference summary, and if there's any areas where you are not crystal clear, I would recommend that you uh, flag that area, put a star by it, and then check in with your special education consultant or director of special ed for guidance. On the participation guidelines form, this is the page where the ARC marks whether or not eligibility is confirmed. The ARC must have a statement documenting that all items described in participation criterions one through four have been met and document. By this point, we have drafted and discussed data or documentation and documentation for every criterion. So an example, after reviewing all criterion for the participation guidelines, the ARC agreed that the student is eligible to participate in the alternate assessment because they are a student with a significant cognitive disability and the ARC has verified all supporting documentation used in making this decision. So as a sample statement, that is one you might consider using. After all the sources of evidence and justification have been reviewed and documented, the ARC may continue with the remainder of the participation guidelines documentation form below that included documentation questions. If you review the guidance document, you'll notice that there is specific guidance if you check no um, or if you check yes to ensure that you have all documentation correctly and you will note that sample statement um, that you could consider for adding into your conference summary notes. 
Note that the compliance record review requires a statement of the ARC's decision and reasons for the decision. You will have evidence in the present levels, in the participation guidelines, and the conference summary minutes. The reason for all of this documentation is because this is a very complex and weighty decision to make. So let's talk for just a second about communication. Remember in the earlier sections of the participation guidelines, we focused on the phrase across multiple settings and partners. The majority of our students will have significant communication deficits. If the student meets requirements for the alternate assessment programs, the student's current level of communication has been determined and verified by the ARC. If the student meets requirements for the alternate assessment program, documentation in the IEP should show evidence of a communication plan. Note that the communication plan may be documented in the present levels, special factors, measurable annual goals, and or, present, uh, and or the supplementary aids and services sections of the IEP. The next section that you will see in Appendix C in the guidance document is the learner characteristics inventory. So the purpose and use for the learner characteristics inventory is that this is used to describe the population of students who take an alternate assessment based on the alternate achievement standards. The LCI needs to be completed and analyzed at the ARC and it should assist the ARC in determining and ensuring that only students with the most significant cognitive disabilities are participating in alternate assessments. The LCI data can help districts in comparing similarities and differences in their students taking alternate assessment with those students in other districts in the state also taking the alternate assessment. There are 12 indicators ranging from communication and language use, health and attendance, to current descriptions of reading and math. Many of the indicator responses are subject to change as interventions, support, and services are provided to the student. The LCI is completed annually as the student is found eligible to participate in the alternate assessment. When completing the LCI, the ARC should select the response that best describes the student and or services the student is reserving for each indicator. On page 28, find the section that says note. There you should read and highlight the words that are in italics. The second note tells you where the communication plan may be located in the IEP. Sometimes it's necessary to have a separate communication plan in the event that the student has very complex communication needs. This must all be documented in the conference summary. You'll note here the section on page 27. I would recommend that you highlight this whole section labeled addressing receptive and expressive communication. The ARC must verify that receptive and expressive communication is addressed in the IEP. The student must have a communication plan or the student's IEP must document the communication is not an area of concern, in which case a communication plan would not be necessary. If a student's expressive communication on the LCI is rated as either pre-symbolic or emerging symbolic, then a communication plan must be in place. When looking at the documentation section on page 27, it's important to highlight the sentence about the pre-symbolic or emerging pre-symbolic language, which again reiterates that communication plan must be in place. The documentation on the record review document matches and aligns the section that we just addressed. In addition, note that the compliance record review document specifically addresses the fact that the student's IEP is in play and matches the alternate assessment decision. So as we wrap up our learning, I wanna thank you for joining me today. And I wanted to share a tool that you could use to help with documentation. This is a supplement that you can use. It is not a required component, but could help with your documentation in the conference summary. 
this alternate assessment participation guidelines documentation summary that was created by the GREC Cooperative has um, that specific documentation requirements in a two-page form that might be a good tool to use as a checklist to ensure that all pieces are in place. Note that there is a link on the bottom right corner to take you to this optional resource. I wanted to thank you so much for joining me today and just to remind you that from my family to yours, uh, a decision to um, consider alternate assessment and participation is a big decision that impacts a family um, throughout that student's life. So as you see on the bottom right, from the time that Dan was an infant, all the way through when our oldest daughter Catherine was graduating from high school and Dan was a brand new high schooler. Um, we had ARCs every year to consider Dan's participation in the alternate assessment and this decision was never an easy one. While Dan is still a pre-symbolic and emerging communicator and um, participated in alternate assessment every year, every year. It was a challenging, challenging time and decision for myself, my husband, and my family. Dan has now graduated from um, school have, as a post-21 graduate um, and is participating in adult activities. And every time we considered those ARC decisions, we were thinking of this day and time when Dan no longer qualified for school age services and was out in the adult world being supported by myself and my husband, Dan, and our children. Um, so we appreciate you taking the intentionality and time that you do with every ARC meeting. Um, you know, every child that you meet, every student that you support, and every family that you work with, um, to them, it is not just one more meeting, but it's planning for the rest of their lives. And so I want to thank you for joining in with me today and to encourage you to reach out if you ever run into any questions. There is in your training guide the um, document uh, the link that you need to get to the Google form. You will need all of your three keywords to be able to complete that form. And then your PD or ELO certificate will be generated directly to your email. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at NKCES to either Becky Nixon, the director of special ed, or to myself, Laura Clark. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our training today.